Welcome to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast, where we discuss various dog training topics to help you become the best leader for your dog. Marvin Pierce has over 20 years of experience with obedience training for dogs located in the Sherwood, Oregon area. Offering private lessons and group clinics, the dog teacher has been able to change the lives of dog owners by helping them develop and maintain an obedient dog. For more information, contact us at MarvinPierceDogTeacher.com. Tonight it's exciting. We have everybody back. We've got Brett here. We've got Bianca here. And Jason and Suzanne's here. We didn't let Bodie come in and sit in the house with us. He would have probably enjoyed that, hanging out with us. Ate a little dinner with us. Jody cooked salmon and steak tonight and baked potatoes, so that was pretty fun. And then uh, we just need some questions tonight. Last week it got pretty boring. It won't be as bad night, but I'm going to throw somebody under the bus. So last two weeks I was really nice because it's Jody and I and I was being good. So, Jason, you got anybody you want me to throw under the bus? We can come up with something. Uh, I think. Suzanne says she had a couple of questions for you tonight. <laughs> She'll come up with some, I'm sure. The fun thing is for me now is watching Suzanne get better and better every day with training dogs. And uh, for the comedy this week, kind of this week, uh, somebody came in and wanted to do their lesson last night, and they wanted to know where Jocelyn was because they thought she was doing her lesson. So that was pretty fun. Were y'all over there picking on one another? No, I was seeing if uh, any questions were coming in. Oh. <laughs> Michael Poole's here. He says, hey, boss. Hey, Mike. How you doing, man? Michael Poole? Hey, Mike. <clears throat> I got a, a log that somebody brought me. It's a cedar, but I wanted to try to get a picture, and I forgot to send to you so you could tell me which. I think, and I don't know, is, is there a white cedar, Mike? Uh, this one's got a totally different bark than the bark I'm used to, so. I milled one log for some binders, two or three more out here. I got a mill. And I need some cedar logs, Mike, if you got any laying around. So uh, I think one of our topics tonight is people in denial of their problems with their dogs. We get people that come here and they only have one problem, they say. My dog jumps on me, and if I could get that to stop, I'd be happy. And it's not always one dog, the dog that jumps on you. It's a matter of why they're jumping on you. Most of the time it's because you're playing with them and loving them and petting on them and getting them all wound up and then you want to stop and they don't. And that's when it starts as a puppy. And then you just keep adding to it by, a lot of people just tell them, no, don't get down, quit, don't jump on me. <clears throat> and Brett, is our videos up, right, with all of our commands and what they mean? Uh, we have the first video, so the first command, which is at, that's up. So the whole thing ain't up as one? The whole video will go to YouTube, but it's not Oh, well. Yes. Oh, cool. So we did a video uh, here recently. I think Bianca and I and I don't know, remember Suzanne, Suzanne was, there. was there. Yeah, she just hid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. We were. Out of the yeah. screen. <laughs> Out of the screen. So we, uh, we did a video on the different commands we use. And I think sometimes that's what makes life easier for people is if they just chill out and not be like get down don't jump on me and get off of me and just say no and teach a dog what no means it makes a lot of difference and it works for kids too sometimes not always don't work for wives just forget that <laughs> just go skip that part of it and go on <clears throat> so uh bianca yes you said you had a bunch of questions or something I have one topic. You're, you're ready already? I'm ready. Okay. One topic is, and this happens a lot, where customers will get a submission form that says what they want to fix with their dog. Some people will write two pages, and then most people will write, it's really just this one or two things I want to fix. And it's hard because I think everyone if you don't know any better, comes in thinking that you can, we called it spot train, where Suzanne and I were talking about all my dog does is jumps on me, or all my dog does is barks at the FedEx driver. But usually within 15 minutes of meeting the dog and the owner, we see that there's a lot of underlying You know, things. for me, I think 95% of the time when people show up, it's always the same. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like if everybody's dog would send in a little form on what's wrong with mom and dad. <laughs> right, right. It would be the same. Yes. They spoil the crap out of me. Yes. 
Yeah. They feed me lots of treats and they let me sleep on the bed and they let me sleep on the couch and they sit around and talk to me all the time, whether I'm good or bad. Yes. And if I'm really bad, then they raise their voice and we get really <laughs> excited and then we get a jump and run more. Yeah. And then if when they try to catch me, we just really get to tear the house up because yeah. I run really fast and they all kinds of different words I've never heard before, but I think Marvin said it was profane when they're chasing me through the house. And then they catch me in the bathroom and shut the door, and then they come in there and they have a talk with me. And we go out of the bathroom and they put me in this little cage, and then they let me settle down for a while, and then they turn me out, and they think I'm going to be good, but I'm really wound up now because I've been in my cage taking a break, and I'm ready to go again. Yeah. And that's what dogs would say, and all of them pretty much say the same thing. <clears throat> so yeah. the people... I'm here and the funny thing is for me is here a while back we had someone came in with a dog I won't mention names because I don't remember the name but they're like you know <clears throat> this dog is I don't know my first dog I got was really kind of bad and then whenever I got another dog it was kind of bad and now I have a third dog and it's kind of bad and they're like I'm wondering if it's me <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, being that you mentioned it, yeah, maybe so. <laughs> you know, you didn't just get three bad dogs. Yeah. Three dogs got one bad owner. Yeah. And so, for me, it's funny. And how, how you can spoil dogs. I have two prime examples set here. Bianca and Suzanne's hiding over in the corner. And it's easy to spoil dogs. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's so easy to spoil yeah. dogs. and. And me, I always, now, if you take Bear, Roxy, and Mari, we won't count Callie because she's a turd, but Bear, Roxy, and Mari, are they spoiled? No. Do you say they're spoiled? Mm -mm. So me, I say they're spoiled. Because Bear goes up to everybody and sits down and they always pet him. <laughs> they always tell him how sweet he is and how nice he is and how polite he is. And... Like Roxy tonight, people think it's funny because she's trying to steal your bandana off of your pup, yep. you know. And they both get petted. They get a lot of attention, really. I mean, they get griped at a lot, too, but they get a lot of attention. Yeah. And so for me, I feel that, if anything, they're spoiled in a great way because they get to go out how many times a day? Eight, ten, fifteen times a day. They get to go out and play in the field and run around. And come to lessons and yeah. meet new people every day they, and meet yeah, new they dogs. Meet. Yeah. So for me, I yeah. say all three of those dogs are really spoiled. Right. Oh, but they just have never been spoiled before the foundation of training was put on them. They're not spoiled rotten. Well, bear may be questionable, <laughs> but they was never spoiled before they got a foundation training on them. Right. And, yeah. you know, me, I talk a lot about this, like my kids, Jason and Laura. If when they were 16, if I would have bought both of them brand new trucks, they would have took care of them and really appreciated that. Where some kids at 16 years old, if you bought them a new, most kids would want a Porsche or something, but they would tear it up and then they'd be mad because you didn't keep fixing it. Right. And I think our dogs are the same way. We spoil our dogs rotten and then our dogs get aggravated because we start using all kinds of wild, crazy, screaming, hollering words whenever they're not being good. And we don't understand why they're not being good because we just told them we wanted them to quit jumping on me and get off the couch and don't get on the couch no more or whatever. And then if you look at the dog side of it, which I always do, I tell people all the time, I defend the dog, not the owner. <clears throat> and the dogs have a hard time. It's just like people, I tell people all the time, do this. And they don't, like the other day in class of nine. What was it, seven <coughs> people <coughs> went the wrong way. I mean, seven people went the wrong way. And it was like the same thing in Newburgh. I mean, you could do it, do it, do it. And the fun thing in Newburgh one day was I had everybody to put their dog on the curb and they stand on the sidewalk. And the first person did it wrong and everybody else <laughs> followed that person. And then two of them even told me, they said, we didn't think that's what you said. It's like, then why did you follow that person? Why did you not do what I said? Yeah. I don't know. But yet, we want to tell the dog to do something, and we get aggravated because the dog don't listen. And they don't understand what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. And they don't understand us anyway most of the time. And a lot of times people will have one problem like jumping that we can teach them how to fix, but we see that the dog needs a lot more help than that. Yeah, and a lot of time, like yesterday before we done a lesson, and ladies talk about dog jumping. And then she's like, well, yeah, but I don't always catch him. 
in. I don't remember what all this stuff. Oh, he jumps all over the furniture and won't stay off the furniture. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. And normally from the time we start a lesson until we get done with it, like you said, there's 15 more problems been added. Yeah. Once we start thinking about it. Yeah. And then the other day we had a couple that threw one another under the bus and it was moving. It's pretty, yeah. <laughs> it pretty hysterical. It was a lot of yeah, because one of them the started bus. talking about the other one's dog, and then, man, <laughs> the other one just cut loose. And so it's really funny when you hear everybody's trying to be conservative and not saying nothing's really wrong with their dog. And then, man, once one of them opens up on the other one, it's game on. So it was really funny watching them and listening to them. And then I just stop and wait till they're done. <laughs> Hope we got it on video so we can laugh at it later. But. It is. It's really hard to for some people to admit their dog has a problem, mm -hmm. or that they do. <clears throat> for me, if you admit your dog has a problem, you just admitted you have a problem because you're the one that created it. But uh, there are a lot of times where, like for example, uh, someone will come in and and they're convinced in their mind that they have the rotten one in the litter. Yes, they do. <clears throat> it's not them. It's they got the one bad dog, and it's harder than any other dog yeah. they've had, and they they can't see that it's things they've done to encourage it to act that way. And you see it all the time when we do a lesson, <clears throat> especially a meet and greet or consultation in round pen. Somebody will bring a dog in. It's just like like the little pit bull tonight. It was just being a little turd, and mm -hmm. I got a leash on him. And within two minutes, he was sitting by my foot. And yeah. Like really. Yeah. Like, yeah, because I didn't drag him around. I just yeah. gave him options, and he's like, you know, I'll just sit there and think about a minute. Yeah. And that's all you ask of him, but I never talked to him. I yeah. sure didn't even learn his name until afterwards. Yeah. But I think the majority of the time people want to try to make their dogs do something that their dogs don't understand. And, and at the miserable. clinic, we had one person that said that their dog was really nervous about everything. And at the beginning of the clinic, that dog's tail was tucked all the way under between its legs and you put the collar on it and started to have it work rather than be down on the ground cuddling it and petting it and telling it everything was okay and that dog's tail literally came right out yes when you were right. using a pinch collar on it because it was like oh i understand what he's asking yeah and just walk. relief walk. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all i want to do is walk <laughs> and it is <clears throat> for me when you get <clears throat> excuse me you get people that Try to communicate with their dog with a tight leash. And it don't matter what you have. <clears throat> the other day we were, I don't know, me and somebody was in a pretty decent discussion about a, a halter versus a pinch collar versus a gentle pull. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this, I think, today, too, with mm -hmm. someone. Yep, and in <clears throat> There is a lot of difference in them. For me, I feel that a gentle lead is you put a half hitch thing on her nose and pull her nose around when they're not being good. And I think it's a gimmick. I don't think it's it's like putting a band aid on a salve, sore and never putting salve on it. It just doesn't do no good. It just festers up and one day it blows up. And me with a harness, I think they're a really good tool for securing your dog in a vehicle or pulling you on roller blades or roller skate or mm -hmm. if you're going up a hill, harness is really good. Your dog can help you up the hill. But I think it's still, you're not, I don't feel you're training your dog. And that's mm -hmm. for me what we like to do. We like to teach dogs and train them, teach things, and then try to get the owners on board with the with the program. And the majority of the time, you know, it helps us a lot because somebody can come here. And now we can, the other day people came in and we had their dog out with like 15 dogs and when they couldn't even have it around one dog three mm -hmm. weeks ago. And they couldn't believe the difference with their dog, you know. And I think it's because we put them out with good dogs to start with and then just keep building on it. The little Rocky dog, he wanted to eat Roxy. Well, he did get a hold of her and pull some hair out of her the other day. And then, me and you put him in yesterday. Yeah. And he just wanted to whip every dog in around him. But by the time he was done, he was pretty cool. We finally got him off leash and he got to run around with some dogs. And he never did go play with them, but he wanted to try to, but he just didn't know sure how to do it. So, so wouldn't you say that it should be the same for everybody that shows up here then, that if you want your dog to be a good dog, you're going to have to be good yourself, and that's going to take some foundation. It does, and, and we always tell them that. So, you, you know, <clears throat> like, board and train is almost necessary, right? I mean... Depends on the dogs. You know, we get a lot that isn't necessary because they don't have that big issue. And they're dedicated, though. Yeah. The people yeah. or the dog? The people. The people. Okay, because I was going to yeah. say, because 
pulling the dog away for board and train is also pulling the dog away from the owner, which gives them time to figure yes. it out, and then come in like we did and sit there and be told, ah, on our end, you know, like, you're doing it wrong. And, and you need that feedback, right? Okay, yeah. what am I doing wrong? How do I help the dog to understand what I'm trying to say? Build that foundation so that after, when you leave here, then as long as you're committed. Yeah, and I tell people going. that all the time. You know, you're either in to win or you're wasting your money. Yeah. yeah. But for me, normally with people that come here, within 10 to 15 minutes after I meet them, I already know whether they need to do board and train or they can do it themselves. Yeah. So you didn't think we could do it ourselves, huh, Marvin? Try not. Well, we just had Nelly and Rogue's uh, owners here. Yes, and I told them they could totally do lessons. And they worked so hard, and they t did their homework every day. Yeah, they do. And yeah. their dogs are doing But great. it's different. But for me, you just like those people. How, what made them different than you two? I think that they knew... Well, I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't have. <laughs> I would have been successful. I, I, I needed my dog to go through that, and I needed to come out here and do it, because I didn't have... I don't have the time to be committed to that on a, on a full-on daily basis. And that's exactly what I tell people constantly. Yeah. yeah. You know, you don't have the time. Yeah. I mean, and it's hard, and it's hard for people to understand because the majority of the time the people are like, you know, I just don't have the time. I'm like, you know, that might be the problem. Yeah. yeah. You don't have the time, so all you yeah. do is cuddle with your dog when you yeah. have your dog. Yeah. Or get and mad because yes. you're not listening. Yeah. But and you holler. And yeah. Just, yeah. But then five minutes later, you're hugging on your dog, telling them how cool they are. Yeah. <laughs> she is. There she is. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes it really hard for a dog because of the fact that it's just like, to them, they can't win. Yeah. Because one minute you're their buddy, everything's great, and the next minute you're just like <laughs> aggravated. Yeah. And Bianca, she was going to do it herself when she came with Scout. I was determined. Yeah. She was not <laughs> quitting. And I never encouraged you to board and train. No, I showed up in the driveway crying. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, no, keep on. Just keep, I'll help you. Whatever you want to do. Because yeah. she had an attitude. And there was no need arguing with her. And she finally figured out that it just wasn't working. Yeah. And... For me, I mean, I'm glad and lucky that she did come here because now she works for us and she does a great job. But still, it's hard. It's hard to tell a person that you need to get away from your dog mm -hmm. yeah. and chill for a while and let us get your dog started. Yeah. Yeah. And we send videos of dogs to people. If they have a really bad problem dog, we'll send them videos sometimes before they come back just so they can see their dog can be kind of normal. It's like learning how to do <clears throat> anything. Anything. Uh, you know... I could watch a video on something and maybe try and do it, but I, I then I don't get feedback. I don't get somebody Correct. saying, uh, you just <clears throat> gotta tweak that just a little bit, or if you do it this way, you're gonna find you're gonna get better results. I'm just listening to myself. I'm like, oh, I'm getting a little bit better. You know, so I feel like being in front of you and, and, and hearing that feedback and continuing to learn from it is almost necessary, right? But and see, like with extent. you, you, Suzanne, Bianca, I mean, all of you were determined to succeed. Mm -hmm. You just, the two of you wanted help to start with. She didn't want help. She just wanted instructions. And then she figured out she needed help, and she was all in. Once she decided that this is what I need to do, she was in it, and we won, you know. But a lot of people won't do it. They're just yeah. like, no, they're just too stubborn. They're like, I've done this, and I'm going to fix it. Yeah. Like Kay, for instance, with uh, Quinn. She's like, nope, I created this, and I'm going to fix it. I just want help. And But she was here four, five, six days a week right? doing lessons with me and Quinn with a muzzle on when she started. And she won because she just she had the time, which most people don't, and she had the patience. Yeah. And yeah. it was fun for me, but most of us don't have that. Like me all the time, people ask me why I don't fix this on my truck or my trailer when I can. So <clears> I'd rather train a dog and pay somebody else. I don't want to work on it and be cussing it and getting all greasy and busting my knuckles and shit. And maybe it don't fix get fixed anyway. Why not just train a dog? I love doing that. So mm -hmm. it makes a lot of difference. But it is it's hard for people sometimes to accept. I don't know if you want to call it failure. Not winning, whatever you want to call it, with mm -hmm. their puppy. 
You know, they're like, they raise this pretty little puppy and it's six months old and it's biting and chewing on them and running off and won't come to them and mm -hmm. jumping on them. And your friends don't want to come over because your dog's a turd, you know? And then you're like, you just don't want to give up. And then you come here to me and you get an attitude because I try to tell you the truth, but yet I got to be nice because I I'll try to be nice anyway. But I don't want to offend people, you know, because that's not what we do. But sometimes the truth really hurts, and sometimes people won't accept nothing but the truth. Yeah. You can't just be, like, really nice. Sometimes you just have to say, you know what, you screwed your damn dog up, mm -hmm. and if you want me to help you, I'll be glad to help you, but you got to admit it first. Yeah. If you can't admit it, then it's really hard to fix it. Yeah. And there's no shame in screwing up a dog. No. Yeah. It's very easy to do. I mean, there's millions of people who do it every day. Well, we've done it several times. Yeah, a lot of people have. <laughs> and I never owned a dog like I did once I moved to Oregon. I never had a trained dog like this. Never owned a lot of dogs anyway, probably five or ten or whatever. But I, uh, well, maybe 20, I don't know. But I never had a dog like this. And then one day I was talking to a bunch of people, and this guy tried to throw me under a moving bus by saying, well, you remember your first dog you trained, it probably wasn't that good either. Like, as a matter of fact, it was. And, but it was because, and I, all I had was a book. And, but I was determined. I took an eight week old lab puppy and I could do anything with it. If I could blind retrieve with it, I mean, it was swimming in the Willamette River, come back, whistles, everything, hand signals, whatever I wanted to do with it. I don't know, maybe I got the right pup out of the litter. I don't know. I got a super smart pup, but between me and it. But every time I feel that I trained with that puppy, I was consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried to do what I call perfect, which perfect to me is not the same as other people, but in my world, it was perfect. But the dog didn't sleep in my lap. He didn't lay on the couch with me. He stayed in the backyard. If I was in the house, he was in the house with me, but he'd be laying on his little rug or whatever. He wouldn't be up on the couch. <clears throat> and I took that dog all over town. Everybody petted him. I mean, he loved everybody, he loved dogs. But why did he turn out so good? I think one thing is I treated him like a dog, and he wasn't my lap dog, and he didn't, I don't even think I fed him treats either, but he he was just a cool puppy, because, like your dog now, now Tilly. Mm -hmm. She's going to be kicked out of school. Yeah, she's coming along really nice. But it's because of the determination and you knowing what you did the first time. Yeah. And But a lot of people don't. They'll do it three or four times and still think they got a bad pup out of the litter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's got to be... I don't know. Brett, are we on live? Is there any questions? Uh, yeah, one question from Mike. Jeez. And he says it's not quite a training question, but still a question. So this is not necessarily about training, but you can talk briefly about dew claw removal. Are you for it, against it? Should breeders have them removed after birth? You know, I'm always for dew claw removal. I've never done it, uh, but it's it's a safety thing. And when, you, when they're born, you can do it, and there's nothing to it. I mean, I won't even say how I've been told to do it because I've never done it, but mm -hmm. uh, I feel that the safety of the dog, the vet bills a lot of times, because if they rip a new claw, it's bad news. It is, yeah. And there's nothing yeah. to remove a new claw from yeah. the pup. So, yeah, I would say do it. Yeah. Did we do Roxas? <laughs> I Did you do Tilly's? She didn't have... Or the breeder must have. Oh, they might have. Yeah, yeah. I think the breeder Because there's nothing have. to it when they're born. Yeah. So. Kay says, Callie isn't a turd from your conversation earlier. And she said, <laughs> yes, the others are spoiled. <laughs> you know, Callie is awesome. I she mean, is she's really cool. Getting better yeah. every day. Yeah. I mean, she just keeps getting better. Uh, the fun thing with her is she liked Roxy. Remember when Roxy didn't accept a dog not liking her? Yes. Callie's that way. And Roxy now is like, I don't care if you like me or not. <laughs> <laughs> and Callie's not there yet. She still wants the dog to like her whether they do or not. So it's pretty fun. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to find some old questions. And I want to add one more thing, too, because we were jogging down memory lane when we brought Scout and Lucky here before. We did our lessons, and I would go home, and I would do exactly what you had taught me, and I could, like... No, you the... would do exactly what you thought I taught you. No, I, I'm talking about, like, the barrel work and things like that. I could get that down. I, that was, like, cool. Marvin told me what to do. It was super easy for my dog to understand. It was easy to make it happen. But when he'd get in an argument, then I'd be like, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> or if the argument was different the next day... Now I still don't know what to do, and 
it was the best thing for my dog to drop crying. it off for yes. three weeks. To get it away from you. I, until I put him through it, I didn't know how great it would be for him to <clears throat> be allowed to reset and get away from me, who was confusing him and stressing him out and causing that's, him to dogfight. Yes, and that's one of my things I have here, one of my notes from last week, week before last. People are always asking about it, but <clears throat> I don't feel it's fair... I shouldn't say it isn't fair. It's just something I would never do. I would never have a dog that I've got to lock away from people because it don't fit my program. And it never has fit my program. Even cow catching, I couldn't have a dog that would want to bite someone. Right. Now, people who knew me that I would go catch cows for sometimes quite often if they got out, which they did, they knew when I got there to leave my dogs alone. Right. We were there to do a job. I get my dogs one or five or whatever. I got out of the truck and they waited until I got my horse out of the trailer and then we all went off and gathered cows or whatever. Uh, but it's just hard for people to understand sometimes that if I, like you with Tilly, I don't fool with Tilly. I mean, I probably touched her today more than I've touched her at all and I think I pet her twice. Yeah. But I leave her alone because she's your dog and I don't want her to be my dog. Right. Now, when she tried to mouth on me here a while back, I cracked her pretty hard. And I don't think she put teeth on nobody since. Nope. She's like, oh, shit, this is not a thing to be doing. Yeah. And she just quit. <clears throat> but it's it's not the same as if, for me, like if you had Tilly out and Jason come over to pet her and she mouthed on him. I'm 99% sure he would not have corrected her the way I did, if he even corrected her. Right. Most time, people won't correct your dog because it's not the other person's place mm-hmm. to correct your dog. Right. But she got to hold my finger and piss me off, so I just corrected it, and yeah. it was done. But I feel it's different because I train dogs every day, you know? Right. And me, if I'm out walking, my, even a client's dog, you know, we don't let a client's dog jump on them when they come back for a first lesson at the board and train. Right. And we don't let... We don't like for that person to correct their dog because the first thing, I ah, no, no, get down. And it's like, that's not the words we right. taught them, you know. We taught them no. Yeah. That means you can't do it. And the dogs that come in for me, ah, because you can't do that, it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Then good, you're right. And the majority of the times, that'll fix most of your problems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Believe it or not, with a dog, if you just learn to... For me, you bite him with a collar, a little slip rope, or whatever you might have. But I don't think a harness would do it as well. I don't know that a gentle lead would do it as well. Never used a gentle lead. Uh, but for me, when I go back to these puppies when they're a baby, their mom would get them by the neck and bite on them a little bit and growl at them when they're being bad. And then when yeah. they behave, she would quit and lick on them, let them know life's good. I feel we do the same thing, only we don't lick on them. We just tell them they're good. They learn the word is good. And that's what they wanted to try to do is be good. And, <clears throat> oh, man, y'all get some lemon pie. <clears throat> so for me, it's just amazing how much time and effort people put into training a dog whenever they change the words constantly. <clears throat> Never letting your dogs be free. I think that's one of the huge things for people. As our dogs are always locked up. Joe, you're gonna make me eat on <laughs> yep. Facebook. That's for Bianca. That's frozen no. Well, two for me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to take mine. <clears throat> but it is really hard for people to understand the difference. I'm take your mic. <clears throat> Yours is on. This one's dead, so I'm gonna swap my ones. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> we have a volume. Uh yeah. Linda with uh, Watson and Izzy says, thanks for taking such good care of Watson and Izzy. The training has made such a difference, and we really enjoyed the process. How's Linda's foot or ankle? Yeah, how's your foot, Linda? What happened to her foot? She took a spill on the ice the other day and... Oh, yeah. I remember yeah, you told like me that. to know how you're doing. <laughs> and then Samantha Rib says, looking forward to dropping off my crazy dog off on Monday to the st- for the start of board and train. Is it good? I can't remember I what kind of dog that. that was. It's I think it's like a little shih tzu like mix. 
I have mm-hmm. to pull away because it's going to be gone and everybody's just going to start. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Good night. Right? Yeah. That's frozen lemonade pie. But it is fun for me to see the people who take your dogs home. And, mm-hmm. and you know, we've got friendships from ever. I mean, from when I started it. Even my cow dog, one of my best buddies was Scott in Montana. I met him like 18 years ago, maybe now or so, through cow dogs, and we're still buddies. I've been over elk hunting and cowboying with him and stuff. And, Bought and sold dogs back and forth with him and horses. And so a lot of the people here, we tell them, well, we tell everybody that once they've been here for training, they're always welcome to contact us if they need help. And that's one thing I feel like it is really hard sometimes at the first lesson because we're telling them that their dog they think has just one or two problems has got a lot of problems, including the owners. But by the end, a lot of those people are like family. They are. And really enjoy coming up for their lessons. And, and set your dogs free stuff. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun to see the people change. And the dogs really thank us, too. We get cards and shit from dogs all the time saying thanks for fixing mom and dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've had um, two labs prior to Bodie. And um, both of them were beautiful, good labs that were very bad. Right, I mean, their I nature, their, for the I know. Their, their nature <laughs> was good, right? They had good demeanor, but they were bad. And our our chocolate lab was just horrible. I hated that dog so much. It, but but what's more frustrating is we both realized that it was we completely blew it with them, and that it was our fault that sure. we did not like them. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were so bad because we never properly trained them. And, you know, we, I, I'm just here as a sounding board, I think, right now. But, I, you know, just to say that, you know, by coming up here and having Bodhi go through board and train, our, our re- relationship and dynamic in the house is so much better. But it also is frustrating to know that it would have taken... Three weeks of our lives <laughs> when he was to like, solve <clears throat> years of pain. <clears throat> years of pain. In the right place, though, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's true. I don't disc any trainers on the Internet or in person. You know, everybody is what they are. and I'm not the best by no means, but I feel that people get frustrated because they take their dog to a trainer and they don't get what they expected to get. <clears throat> but... I feel majority of the time, not all the time, but a lot of times, it's, I feel because the people didn't get the information they needed. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Fixing dogs is pretty easy, but people's hard. Yeah. I mean, like the other day, we were talking about the clinic we done in class nine. We have, what, six or eight people there mm-hmm. and six or eight dogs. And when you get there, for me, it's always fun. I mean, it's just a rush to get there and see what kind of dogs you have coming in and how bad they are and how good they are. And Some people, it would be really stressful. But me, I crave it. I love it. I mean, just because it's a lot of fun. And the, the little German Shepherd pup, when we first started, I don't know if there was doubt in your mind or Suzanne's mind, but I said by the time we were done, I would have that dog walking by my leg on a loose leash, mm-hmm. and he never broke. He never gave to me the first hour or two. No, he didn't. <clears throat> and for me, I'm like, how many people are doubting that I'm going to pull this off by the end of the day? And did, did you think I was going to accomplish it? Mm-hmm. Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, cool. I uh, Because I'm sure there's people there that thought it was never going to happen, because that dog was a little bit ornery. But by the end of the a day, lot. he walked a loose leash, and yeah. I even laid the leash on his back. He stayed yeah. right by my leg, had his head wrapped around my leg. Like People feed a lot of treats to get a dog to do that. Yeah. And I didn't feed any. But that mm-hmm. little pup was tickled down, and the yeah. owner was too. Yeah. I mean, he was a super nice pup. But <clears throat> if and it would have been somebody that would have been lacking in confidence, I don't think they'd ever pull it off. Because he just wouldn't give, wouldn't give, wouldn't give. He just determined to be a turd when he left like he was when he got there. Yeah. But me, I knew I had confidence. And, I mean, now I would have been pissed if I would have left there. (laughs) I wouldn't have won. (laughs) Because, for me, I would not have been mad at the dog. I would have been mad at myself. Because what did I do wrong? Right, right. Because I've done it a million times, and there's no reason that it would not work. Yeah. But if it didn't work, it's Mm -hmm. like, what mistakes Mm -hmm. did I make? Right. And 
A lot of times it's that way with people, you know. Some people think I'm a prick, you know, which I don't deny. I probably have been and probably will be again. But I think sometimes the truth hurts, mm -hmm. you know. And like I said earlier, sometimes people just won't listen to you. Mm -hmm. Like that Linda lady, that little kid. <laughs> he was arguing with her. When people do it, they'll stand there and argue with me. Suzanne's seen them. I seen her kick a barrel in a round pin one day just to break people's concentration. <laughs> she thought the dog was going to eat the guy, and <clears throat> it just all went bad. And she was just, and it was a month or two ago, and she just wanted to try to figure out how to help. And she, you literally, right? I did. She kicked the barrel just to try to break it up, <clears throat> and it didn't work. <laughs> but it is, when you get in those situations, for me, it's like, what do you do, you know? And like I said with the little German Shepherd at the coast, for me, it's just all about teaching him to do what you want by repetition. Right. Yeah. That's all it is. You just keep yeah. doing the right thing and tell him when he's right and let him know when he's wrong. They'll try to be right. Like Milo, the white poodle. As soon as that lady hands me the leash, he's fixed. I know. But I you can even leash. stand right next to each other and trade the leash back and forth, yeah. and he knows whose hand it is in. Yeah. So it's just yeah. crazy. But you look at him and her, and for me, I admire her and her husband for the determination. Me they too. Have. Yeah. And he's better every time we see him. Mm -hmm. You know, the day she's talking about how cool he is until she showed up there with all the dogs, and then he wasn't so cool. Mm -hmm. But I feel by the time we left, he was cooler than he was when he got there. Yeah. And that's what makes a difference. Yeah. So, Bianca, I'm going to let you talk a minute. Why? I want to <laughs> touch on what Jason was talking about because. Janice and I will say it all the time, like, can you imagine if we didn't meet Marvin, what we would be <laughs> dealing with? And I've always had dogs, and I grew up with dogs, and there were always things that drove my dad nuts, there were always things that drove me nuts, but it was always like, it just came with the dog. Mm -hmm. And right. now, it's unbelievable to me, and my mom comes to visit, and she can't believe it because they have one dog in their house, and it's crazy. And she's like, I can't believe she can have three dogs in one place and you wouldn't even know they live there. And I didn't even know you could have life with dogs that is so peaceful. And you're not aggravated with them all the time. They're not chewing up your shoes. They're not scratching at the door. I could think of a million things that dogs I grew up with did digging in the garden. Yeah. I mean, my stepmom hated one of my dogs because I remember it would dig up the whole garden right after she'd work on it. And I didn't know you could fix that without standing out there with the dog 24-7. Yeah. And now I feel like you can fix any of those things if you follow through and are consistent with your dog. Did you post the pictures of Tilly on the way back from the park this morning? No. With her head in a jacket? In no. <laughs> <clears throat> it's funny for me because people buy a puppy mm -hmm. and then they like get aggravated because it sleeps for like 30 minutes and then it wants to play. Mm -hmm. And Tilly today, I've seen her a few times, just passed out cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and one of them was whenever on the way back from the park up there because... On Wednesdays, usually at 10, we go to a park, and the day we changed it up, hopefully there wasn't nobody in Newburgh, but we weren't sure what it was like. <laughs> and on the way back, Bianca's a cur dog, Tilly, and then we took a client dog, uh, Charlie, mm -hmm. the golden retriever. But on the way back, Tilly had literally had her nose in a jacket setting up, I think, with her head over sleep. Yeah. I mean, it's because she was just tired. She yeah. was a tired puppy. Yeah. But then when we come back, she was in there playing with a pit bull later. And then, and then on she the ran on the treadmill, and mm -hmm. then I went by and seen her later, and she was in her kennel just snoring. Mm -hmm. I asked uh, Mariah, I said, is Tilly in her kennel? Because the other dogs were out, and I seen her gate was latched, and she's like, yeah, she's in there curled up in bed. But she was a tired puppy. Yeah. And I think that's what's wrong with a lot of the kids nowadays, is they don't never get a chance to be tired. And, and they get into mischief. Yeah. But sometimes, instead of giving the kids something to do, Physically, mm -hmm. we give them an iPad or an iPhone and put them in the corner. Like yeah. the little ranch manager comes here, Clay. <clears throat> he will go watch TV, but if you ship him outside, he's gone. I mean, he's going to go find something to get into. Yeah. And but it's he has. If you give him a choice, who knows which one he might take? 
But if you say, Clay, let's go outside, he's gone. He's ready to go. And dogs are that way. If you're like, hey, go in there and eat the carpet and chew the cushions off the couch, they're like, okay. But if you say, hey, let's go for a walk for 10 minutes or put them on treadmill. Yeah. And then let them go in there. You go in there five minutes later, they'll be curled asleep because yeah. they've got to burn some energy. But you've yeah. got to do it numerous times throughout the day and right. the night. Or you even got up with Tilly in the middle of the night and put her on treadmill. When I first brought her home, yeah. <clears throat> I was so excited to bring a puppy home. And then I was like, oh, my God, zero hours of sleep. I can't. I'm not doing this for two weeks. No way. I mean, I came in stressed the next day. I can't work and raise a puppy. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> and we get we get people who have a child and get a puppy, and I'm then that's what, we've got one up there now. I think. Yeah. Yep. They had a baby and bought a puppy about the same time. Yeah. Hopefully, my daughter's listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what happened with the one daughter who was thinking about getting a puppy down there? A dog no, from the pound. Not, no, they, she didn't. She. Thought about it and decided not to. So. I, I, that's the one I'm talking about. Just she'll, send her Bodie. decide to get yeah, a dog. Okay. <laughs> send, yeah. her send her Bodie for a couple weeks. Okay, but well, I did have another topic I wanted to talk about. And this we got a question, Brett? Yes, we have a couple people. Let's answer those about. first. Yeah. Let her eat her pie before it gets <laughs> melted. Right? Okay, so we have <clears throat> Nancy. Nancy says, hi, everyone. Greetings from sunny Cabo. Thanks for the videos and great care. You're welcome. I try hard to get them to you. Did we send her some? <laughs> Suzanne, myself, good Mariah job. probably does good job. too. Um, <laughs> I only send videos of bad dogs. I don't send them good dogs. Samantha Ribb says, looking forward to dropping off my crazy dog on Monday for the start of boarding training. Oh, what dog's that? Um, That's the Pug yep. Miniature Pincher. It's a Pug Min Pin. Yeah. Crazy <laughs> and dog he's got an underbite. <laughs> the one with the rap sheet at our call. Yeah, he's got That's pretty long says. rap sheet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we got one the other day that was two full pages. Did you read that one, Suzanne? Did we ever give it to you? You read it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I saw that. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Rochelle on here, and she says, Chevy would be so bad if we didn't meet you guys. Chevy's cool now, though. Yeah, Chevy's yeah. really cool. She does so much with that dog. Takes it to a restaurant, and it sits underneath her and takes it off leash everywhere. You know, going back to what you said, it's funny now when our kids come home and visit. Growing up, like, if you opened the front door, our dogs were gone. Mm -hmm. And you would see our 12-year-old and 10-year-old and 8-year-old <laughs> running around the neighborhood chasing <laughs> the dog so that it wouldn't <laughs> die and get run over. <laughs> And now, you know, they come home and we open the door and the dog's just sitting there like, are we going out or are we staying in? You know, just hanging out with us. And, the, and our kids are like, oh my God, that is so insanely incredible. <laughs> because they grew up like opening the door like this and like in. making sure the dog can't get in there. Hey, how, what can I do for you? You know, and, and so they... they <clears throat> It is a shift that, I mean, we, for 20 years, you know, lived through. But it's funny that our kids recognize that now. Like, we, you know, just with a simple opening of the door, they're like, oh, my God, that must feel so good. To open the door and not have to worry about your dog, you know, jamming out the door or it, doing anything like that. It is hard for people to understand they could have that. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about It's hard for earlier. them to believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's, like I said earlier, one of the things that helps us a lot when people come here and we bring in Roxy, Mari, and Bear, and even Callie, and Scout, and Bodie, and people see that dogs actually don't just run off, yeah. you know, and they don't jump on people. People just have a hard time believing that. Yeah. But we talk about people and yeah. dogs, <clears throat> dogs being protective, you know. Years ago, I don't know, 23, 4 years ago, whatever, right there, I met Jody, I trained a Border Collie cow dog, and I sold that dog in uh, Red Bluff, California. And the lady who bought it, she was all crying and shit because she's so happy and I was crying because my dog was leaving and I love my dog, you know, he's my buddy, but he just wasn't working out for me in the cow dog world. And so I sold him to this lady. She's like, well, how many commands does he have? And I'm like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, will you write them down? So I explained him. So I did. And it was like trying to write a book because this dog, he was smart. And, wow. So she got home with him. <clears throat> she lived in Utah, and she had uh, goats, and she raised bottle babies and stuff and fed them goat's milk. And so I kept in touch with her, and I called her a month or two later, whatever I was talking to her. And she's like, you know what? My house is so peaceful. She said, my kids have grown up and gone. 
And she said, when they come in, they just open the door and barge in the house, you know, and just like they live here and own the place. She said, I brought Jake home about a week or two after he got here. And he said, hey, nobody barges in my door. <laughs> she said, they knock on my door, and I tell Jake whether they can come in or they don't come in. And they said, that's the way it is. And so she said her kids couldn't believe it because he was her best friend yeah. as long as the lady told them they could come in or told Jake that they could come yeah. in. But if, he, if she said no, they didn't get to come in the house. <laughs> she said, it's pretty amazing. But, you know, for me, all that dog ever knew was being trained. Yeah. I mean, I trained on him all the time, and he's the one I got a shirt tore off in a fight with a rope and steering around, and the stripping shoots up there in the kennel, in the rope and arena. Me and him, he got into it with a steer, and the steer was trying to kill him, so I went in to help him, and the steer wanted to kill me, and so by the time we were all done, I mean, I don't know, I don't think that dog would ever forget what I did to help him, you know, the same as we don't forget what dogs do to help us, yeah. and he is the same way, and it just made a huge difference for, for me and him both because he's my first cow dog I ever trained. And I'd done it with videos. Brad, a buddy of mine, helped me for a little while. And then the rest of it, I just demo videos and watch videos and train dogs. And I think that sometimes, uh, for me, I would watch the whole video. One video is five-hour video on training a cow dog. And I watched that thing so many times. But I could watch the whole video. Like Bianca, she gripes about my video. Here we go. It's got wind noise in it or something. <laughs> Quality ain't right or something. And it's like, <laughs> I've never bought a training video for the quality. You know, the now, other day. The video that I want to watch on the Western or car show, I want a quality video. Uh, I just want the, you to know, I on the phone with a customer the other day who wanted to stop wanted help with the stock dog I said we have this DVD that has but so much it. good information I said it's not like HD 4K quality but I said it's a really good informational video and she's coming to buy it have you ever watched all that video? I have it really? pains me to watch it <laughs> And I don't get it. I learn a lot, but man, you know, my I was <laughs> going to let you watch this really good video I have on training cow dog, uh -huh. but I refuse to <laughs> because it's so much worse quality than mine. Worse than the other one? Way mine is like tops. So, <laughs> so you well, will maybe never I should see watch it. that one, no, and then when I watch yeah, yours, feel like, uh, I will feel like it's star. way better. It ain't happening. You're not watching it. Did you die again? Yeah, they're dead. Uh -oh. Somebody didn't charge them. I don't know who, though. Well, you know, that's not oh. my department. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. I'm not licensed to Susie. touch that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Jocelyn, where you at? So, you're so have I to need talk to talk louder. Louder. Yeah. 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 talk a little louder. Hey, yeah, I could do that. But no, it is fun for me to see the people that change with their dogs, you know? They come in here and they see their dogs doing better and then they do better and the dogs do better and they yeah. do better. And I think that's a lot of it. But normally for us, when somebody comes in with a dog, they have a pretty ornery dog. Not very often do we get a really nice dog. Mm -hmm. The German Shepherd we had in here the other day was in- Harvard? No, the one that was in the class. The elderly gentleman. Luna. The one out in the field, the guy? Oh, the... In Klatskanai. No. no, no, out here. In the field. He was... He came into group healing. class, and then he started coming for private lessons. He just wants his dog to heal and stuff. Oh, Tampa. Tampa, yes. Yes. Now, that's probably one of the nicest trained dogs that has came here that wants to further his training. Mm. I and agree with that. For me, it's just really hard, and I mean, I like... I don't know. I beat my head against the visible walls trying to talk to him to explain to him what I felt he needed. When he was defensive on what he did need, but yet I knew exactly what he needed and I tried to tell him, but he just like, and I think you commented once about it was really hard on me and him to, anybody could have said either one of us would have been arrogant. Is that the right word? If they would have wanted to. <laughs> But neither one of us were, you no, know. We yeah. both understood that I was trying to help him, and he was trying to learn. Yeah. But it's almost like me talking to a rocket scientist or something, you know. We're just, like, not on the same page in communication. Yeah. So it makes it really hard. And he worked with a really nice trainer. <clears throat> not sure who she was. She moved out of state or something. Mm -hmm. But 
he worked with somebody and done a really nice job with the dog, but it, for me, it goes back to, I tell people, well, when, I, when I'm working with a dog, normally I've got like a, a blank slate on the wall and I know what the picture's gonna look like when I'm done. And I know what paint strokes to put on it to get the picture. Not that I can paint because I can't draw a stick horse, but I know what steps to take the whole journey. And if I see a mistake coming on, normally I can avoid it. I think Suzanne even commented here a while back about she was being smart ass, believe it or not. Uh, Suzanne? Yeah. Bad. I've never seen that. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> and I'm not yeah. throwing you under the bus either. <laughs> I'm just saying. It was over electric collar, I think you were here, on a dog that they were trying to get to be quiet. Oh, in the kennels. Were you here? I don't think so. If you were, you would remember. Was I? I don't know. But I had told somebody earlier to put a four prong collar on this dog that barks. So we could teach it to quit barking. And we were all sitting around talking and the dog wouldn't quit barking. And I think they handed me the controller. And the controller was, was going to have to go too high. And I said, there's something wrong. And so I went over there because I thought the collar was loose. And then I got there and it's this long haired dog that a four prong collar don't really work on. Oh, I was on. there for this, yeah. So I took the collar <laughs> off. So Suzanne threw me under the bus and drove over me. And then she put it in reverse and backed over me again. Just to make sure that I, she thought I was wrong, but I was not wrong. I was correct. And then so, she said, "Yeah, <laughs> she said that you were making it look like you weren't wrong, even though you, you were wrong. wrong." Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know what? And then she came home and said, "No, I think you're wrong." <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was a matter that I was 100% correct. The collar was not working, so we need to find out why. And when I went to the kennel, I found out they had a wrong collar on the dog for what I was wanting to accomplish. So I was correct, even though she drove me over <laughs> with the bus. So. And that day you were making your point that you make often, which is if what you're doing isn't working, do, do something, something different. different. Yeah. And so I was right. And Suzanne was wrong, but she won't admit it still. It'll be an interesting car ride home, too. <laughs> yeah, you're going to hear about it all the way home. Jason. The bad uh, part with Suzanne is that she decides a half a second after you've opened your mouth that maybe I should. <laughs> but it's too late. She's already. Yeah, yeah. already committed. She's like, I can't shut up. I got to say it. I got to say it. It hurts. But. You know, for me, I talk all the time about how fortunate, lucky, blessed, whatever you want to call it I am, that I have the two of you here training for me, with me. and It's so much more fun having Suzanne having I once in a while somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> she gets some of your slack sometimes. Yeah. It makes it easier on you. But it is fun, you know, and for me, I think that, I mean, a year ago, I couldn't believe that I'd be in this position, you know, to have the crew I have working for me in the kennels and everybody there. And it's yeah. just pretty amazing because I don't have to worry about it now. I don't have to race to the kennels every morning at 7 o'clock, which I kind of don't want to do anyway, but I've been trying not to here lately. But it is fun to see the fact that you do so well with dogs. Suzanne does so well with dogs. Yeah. And it makes a lot of difference for, for the clients, too. It does. Because yeah. they get different people to work with them. It's not always just about me being there. It's any one of you can come in and help me or yeah. take over. Probably. And even oh. explaining things. I'll yeah. say <clears throat> something one way, you say it another way, and Suzanne says it another way, and we all three notice <clears throat> different things that can help. Yes, and that's it. Some people are just really, really hard to communicate with. Yeah. And don't anybody on here think we're talking about y'all because we're not. We're talking about somebody else. Yeah, but. if you ever feel like you get <clears throat> thrown under the bus, we throw each other under <laughs> the bus every day yeah. on a regular <clears throat> basis. <clears throat> and me, I talked about a marriage couple one time getting into a big feud you know with me there and I was like uh marriage counseling yeah yeah I had to put my suit and tie on <laughs> and then somebody who works here later they're like man you said that about them on the internet I'm like who and they said I'm like that wasn't even who I was talking about <laughs> but it can fit so many people yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. I don't want somebody thinking I'm talking about them because 
for me, normally whatever I say on here, I'll say to someone, it doesn't matter to me because I don't ever say anything to hurt somebody's feelings or make them feel bad, you know, except for Suzanne and Bianca, I'll throw them under the bus a little bit. But other than that, no, we don't. And we don't ever, and people, but I got a really stupid question. There's not a stupid question when it comes to dogs. No. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, it's we, so much better to ask the question. It is. Then yeah. to find out whether it is stupid or not, you know, yeah. if it's a stupid question, we'll be like, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> no, we've never done that because I don't think I've ever had somebody ask a stupid question. And and the hard thing for people is to sometimes just ask a question. Yeah. yeah. Me during big expos and stuff, I had two or 300 people in stand there like, anybody got a question? No question. And I'd be like, okay, then I'm going to head to my booth and there'll be 50 people lined up to ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, damn, if you would ask this question, I could answer for 15 of you. So I'd answer 15 times right. a night. Right. And so for me, I've never, I mean, if I was going to do anything, people would be like, could you quit asking questions? I'd be like, <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll save some for the next time. Yeah. But I'd like to try to find out stuff. And I think that a way to find out things is sometimes you can ask the person who just got dog bit what to do to prevent that. But there's so many times people don't know what to do to prevent it, you know. Mm-hmm. Even me, I had a dog bite me up here one time three years ago, whatever, pretty bad. And I feel, I still feel I know what's wrong with The dog just had a screw loose in his head, and we, there wasn't a tool made that would tighten it. And nobody could argue with me that knew the dog because he bit numerous people. So, Brett, you got any questions? Uh, you just had one statement from I'm right? Samantha. Yeah, right? Uh, she said, oh, Asher's rap sheet was probably about a page. I know I have a lot of learning to do, but I know this dog has a lot of potential, and I can't wait to hopefully see us both grow and lower our overall stress levels in our house right now. That dog comes in Monday. That's what we always try to accomplish is make <clears throat> dogs cool yeah. and people better owners, you know? Yeah. And it is. I mean, we get dogs here that people got for... Uh, what was it, Bodie, that come over for a hug whenever I was stressing out on something? Was it Bodie there? Remember today? Or <laughs> he yesterday? did yesterday. Oh, he went uh, over to console Marvin. Yeah. <laughs> where, where were we in the kennels or something? <clears throat> we were out on the playground. You were on the bench. And oh, Su- yeah. Suzanne and I were disagreeing with you. Yeah. And Bodie come over <laughs> and, like, all hugged up with me. I'm like, thanks, buddy. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He knew I needed some positive reinforcement. So I wasn't getting it from you two. So he's like, hey, I'll help you out. <laughs> so, but, you know, we get people who get dogs for a companion for anxiety. Mm-hmm. And then the dog creates more than they had to start with. Yeah. And then the dog has anxiety too. Yes, and yeah. it just—I mean—it yeah. just goes bad on them. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I feel. You know, we have a dog training. And it should be a problem dog training facility because before before you came here, that was ninety percent, ninety five percent of what I've done. Mm-hmm. Now we have a lot of pups come in, mm-hmm. and they're waiting until they're six months old so they can come in for board training, mm-hmm. which is kind of fun. But they come in and do lessons with them. To make them better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when they do come in, they got a head start. Right. Mm-hmm. And and they have a happier life for four months, from eight weeks to six months. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> for the dogs, so they're a better puppy at home yeah. and they don't have any trouble with them. But for me, I can never stress enough for people to get dogs exercised. Ten minutes in the morning and ten minutes at lunch and ten minutes at night, not enough. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's just not yeah. enough. Who closes at night? I do. Sweet. <laughs> I like that idea. I, uh, but for me, it is. It's fun because we have dogs up here, like Rocky now. You know, he came in uh, Saturday for his meet and greet. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Were you out there when Rocky came in? No. no I didn't he was literally, we had those inch and a half rock because they run out three quarters when I rocked my apartment driveway. And he dug four holes throwing rocks. He did. Yeah. I mean, where's horn song? He was just wanting to go eat uh, Elliot. Elliot when she left. Yeah. And I'm like, and oh, Elliot didn't yeah. even look at the dog. No. We were like 15 feet away, yeah. walking away. I mean, that dog yeah. just lost his mind. And then he yeah. grabbed Roxy by the hair. He was going to eat her for yeah. no reason. He had no reason to do it. Yeah. But people don't understand that dog does not want to dog fight. He doesn't. <clears throat> no. He just no. thinks he's supposed to because yeah. of the way he was handled. And to be fair to the owners, you know, it's really hard to get this pups 
introduced to good pups so you could have good dogs. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, where do you go? People are like, oh, my dog's nice. Then it's like, shit, I got to get my dog sewed up because yeah. your dog just got in my lip. Right. Yeah. And so it's really hard. And and a lot of these people, I think, sometimes they want to introduce their dogs to dogs so they'll see if their dog will be good. Because he just bit the last dog he got in this to, and they've been training on him, and they want to try it again. And for us, we've got poor Bear, Roxy, and Mari that always meet the dogs first. Mm -hmm. Normally, Roxy and Mari. Yeah. Bear's kind of third ring. Yeah. Then we have your dog, who's fourth, unless I get Concho. Yeah. And so, one more thing, not throwing anybody under the bus, but it was kind of funny. Yesterday or day four, was up in the woods with dogs. That, was it you and I? In <laughs> treading, treading lightly, <laughs> I'm like, depends. I'm like, why is Sully out here in the woods? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you said they get Sully. I'm like, no, it was Lana. I think Lana and I both <laughs> let the dogs out, so I'm not gonna throw her under the bus because we both did it, and she's probably watching. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> after it's but, off, then we'll tell you. That. Yeah. <laughs> But it was funny because I never said, I've never said, go get Sully. I mean, uh, Sully does not even come in my vocabulary when I want to train dogs and I need a helper. Because Today, Jocelyn would kill me if Sully got hurt. Mariah, she would just say, you're going to pay the vet bill. I'd be like, okay. Yeah. But Jocelyn, nah. She, there would be a funeral, and I yeah. wouldn't know it, because that would be mine. <laughs> so I never said get Sully. But I had a new we dog were in today. The woods, and here he was, Sully, running around with Brady. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. This could be bad. <sighs> so, But we made it. Nobody got hurt. No dogs were hurt during that walk. So what did you do? So Mariah and Jocelyn were up in the field today, and I had a new dog that I needed some dogs for. And I looked up there, and there was, like, nobody out there except for Concho and Sully. And I was like... I'll take Concho. <laughs> I don't want so. <laughs> Mariah just started cracking up laughing because I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> and you know, Concho, it's fun for him because Mariah, she's worked here for almost a year and a half now. Yeah, yeah. And she brought that pup in here like two or three weeks old it with a baby really young, model. Yeah. Because his mom rejected it. And oh. it's pretty awesome for her to raise that dog because he is a turd now. Yeah. He can yeah. be honoring heck, but he's so much better every week. I think that dog gets better. For sure. And yeah. it's because Mariah is just determined to have a cool dog. Yeah. And just because she, and most people, you think, well, I got an eight week old puppy and then you spoil them shitless, you know? It's like Mariah took a two or three week old puppy that she had every reason in the world to ruin. And worry about and baby yeah. and yeah. And she bottle yep. fed that thing. Yep. It seemed like every time I turn around and want to do something, she's over feeding that bottle, baby mm -hmm. bottle. And but she never did spoil him bad. I mean, he he's a heck of a nice dog. Yeah. And now if she wouldn't have been working here, it could have been different. For sure. Because we didn't cut her no slack. I didn't. I wanted her to have a nice dog, and she does. So it's pretty fun. Brett, you got any questions? No more questions. This is me. like a questless night. Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> if people don't start showing up with questions, we're going to go on strike for a week or two. I think maybe they missed Jody. <laughs> they missed Jody? She's the one helping me the yeah. last two weeks. Yep. We should have added her to the table. Oh, we should have. She would have stirred up some questions. She had more questions than anybody last week. She did. She did a good job. Where's Dari at? We need to have her watching. That's a good question. She Dari has always has questions. Kay has questions. But we're going to jump off here. It's after seven. Yeah, it is. And uh, Eliana's probably halfway done taking out that's a That's the so. advantage of, or a good thing about not racing up there. <laughs> Don't say that on the fun. internet. She might watch it. <laughs> Dang. Added that out, Brett. She shouldn't be watching now. Now, whenever I'm late, she's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, it is fun for me now because with the crew we have, I don't have to race up there in the morning. Yeah. And then turn dogs out, I don't have to race up there most of the time. So it's pretty fun. But, hey, Suzanne, Jason, thanks for showing up. Are you kidding? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. We, we got it. We were, we were spoiled. <laughs> some people come to hang out with Marvin. Some people come for his wife's cooking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not all about me. So, hey, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks for listening to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast. If you found this information helpful, we suggest following even more of our dog training tips and resources on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search 